This is Corey Lamley with Life in the Grid, and in this 13-minute video, we'll run through how to use WordPress on your own computer. This process will help you save time, money, and the frustration of messing up a live production site. It'll also give you the power and flexibility of being able to really tweak and design your site like the pros do. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you a huge mistake most WordPress administrators overlook that can cause huge problems if not taken care of. So I'm not going to go into all the details of why this tutorial is so critically important for anyone who runs a website. For a rundown of all the reasons why you need to apply this strategy to your online endeavors, check out the article, Do You Local Host Your WordPress, which can be found by going to the link in the upper right hand corner of this video. Now before we install XAMPP, let me run you through what XAMPP is. XAMPP is a package program that you install on your own computer that allows you to run web-based applications just like you do with your own hosting provider. It's composed of three main components, which are Apache, MySQL, and PHP. These three programs together are what allow you to create web-based applications such as full-blown shopping carts, content management systems, and just about any internet-based application you can think of. So let's get started by installing XAMPP and then implementing WordPress on your own local machine. So doing a quick search on Google, you'll find that XAMPP is at the top of the list and you'll see support for several different operating systems. I'm going to be running through a Windows demonstration. You can follow along with the other operating systems and you'll be able to get the same concepts. So go ahead and click on the operating system of your choice and this will take you to the apachefriendsorg website. You're going to want to go ahead and scroll down here to the bottom and find the installer link. You'll click on this. This will take you over to SourceForge which will then pop up a um, download link here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and discard this because I've already downloaded it to my desktop and I want to speed up this video. So go ahead and click on the installation after you've downloaded it. Begin to run it. Choose your language. Now the first prompt that comes up here is for uh, account user control and this is only on a Windows box and you can easily disable this by clicking on the start menu, clicking UAC, choosing user account control settings and then setting this notify bar down here to nothing or to the very lowest level. You're going to click OK, we'll click OK on this. Now we're going to begin the installation. Now I highly recommend that you put this on a root folder so you could do D colon or E colon or whatever, wherever hard drive you have. Um, I just put mine on C colon so go ahead and make sure that that path is at the root of your hard drive. Let's click next. Now you don't need to worry about installing any of the um, services that are not necessarily required. I don't use them so go ahead and click install and this is going to actually run through a complete installation of XAMPP and um, I am going to pause the video so that we can go to the next section. So XAMPP has finished installing all the files, has laid them all down, and we are at the final installation screen. We're going to go ahead and click finish here. Now my installation took probably about a minute and a half, two minutes, and it's just going to depend on your particular operating system. So let's go ahead and click finish, and it's going to say that it's completely installed and you're going to get this initial uh, error and it's really nothing you need to worry about so just go ahead and click OK. Now when XAMPP first fires up it's going to load up the control panel and is what you're going to want to start up at least for a WordPress installation is you're going to want to make sure that you start your Apache and when this comes up you only see this one time and this is just making sure that your local host has the ability to serve up web pages over a specific port. So you're going to want to go ahead and click allow access and you're going to want to do the exact same th thing for MySQL and we'll click allow access and we are ready with Apache and MySQL running so we can easily come over here to a browser we'll open this guy up and you just type in localhost which is your local box you'll hit enter and here we go we have XAMPP installed um, you click on your particular language and as you can see XAMPP is serving up a PHP page if we click on the PHP info you'll see which version of XAMPP is serving up your particular version of PHP and you can run through all these configuration files and and see a lot of uh, useful information about your PHP so this has just been a quick rundown of the XAMPP on 
uh, Windows and in the next section we'll be showing you how to set up WordPress on your local host. So we got XAMPP installed and we want to go ahead and install the WordPress application onto our local computer. But before we do that, let me explain the underlying structure of XAMPP. As you can recall, I installed XAMPP to the root of my C drive. And inside of XAMPP are the necessary applications in order for WordPress to run. It contains Apache, MySQL, and PHP. However, we still need to put all of the WordPress files into XAMPP so that it can serve those files up and WordPress can run. And the location that we put all of the WordPress files into is a directory called htdocs. It's short for HTML documents. And inside of this folder, which is very similar to your public underscore HTML or your WW root folder on your hosting provider, you'll see that we have several subdirectories. And each of these subdirectories could consist of several different WordPress instances. Or say you even downloaded an open source shopping cart. You can put whatever you want into this a directory and your web server will serve it up. So in this case we're going to go ahead and set up our first WordPress blog and we're going to go ahead and put everything into what we call MyPress1. So I've already pre-downloaded all the files which you can find at WordPress.org. You're just going to download the zip which you see right here and extract all the contents of WordPress into this directory. Now once you have all the contents you're going to want to go ahead and browse out to that directory. So you can go to localhost mypress1, which was the same directory that we have everything in. And as you can see, it's starting the installation process for WordPress. However, before we use WordPress, we do have to set up a database. WordPress requires a database. So we can easily do that by going to localhost xamp, or just typing in localhost, it'll automatically serve this up. And on the left hand side here under tools is a database authoring tool that allows you to create all your databases. So you're going to click on this and this is just a simple interface for creating your database. So let's go ahead and create our first database. We're going to call it MyPress1. We're going to click create. And as you can see it's been created and if we look over here on the left hand side we'll see that MyPress is a database that's ready to be populated with specific tables. However, before WordPress can actually run and connect to this database, it has to have a user account that it uses. Just like you use a user account to get into your computer, uh, your database has to have a uh, user account for you to connect to it. So you can easily create that user account by clicking on this Privileges tab. And we're going to click Add New User. And we're just going to uh, put in a user here really quick, a username and a password. Now, obviously, on a production system, you're going to put in a much more uh, stricter password. But for now, let's just put in there a simple password like test. We're going to click check all. And one other thing that we do want to do here is we want to make sure that our host says localhost. And this will allow this user to connect to the localhost. And we're going to go ahead and click go. And if we click back over here on privileges, we'll see that that user has been added. And now we are ready to have WordPress connect to the database and finish its installation. So the first part of the setup for WordPress is to create a configuration file, which right when you click that, it created the configuration file. Now we are going to go ahead and connect to the database. And remember, our database was MyPress1, and the username was superuser. Our password was test, and we're connecting to the local host. And you always want to get in the habit of creating um, a, a WordPress extension. I usually try to use something, you know, something descriptive. And so you can use something like MyPress1 or Foo or whatever you want. And then you're going to go ahead and click Submit. And this will run the installation. And now we are almost done because we just got to enter in the site title. We're going to call it MyPress1. We're going to just use the... Actually, to get into the habit of making a secure site, go ahead and change this to something that's meaningful to you. So we're going to create a username. We'll call it CLamly, um, super user. And then we're going to enter in a password. We'll just call it test1234. Test1234. And we're going to go ahead and enter an email here. We'll just say test at test. It doesn't really matter here. 
and we're going to install WordPress. And it's running through the installation and bam, we got it. So now you can see that WordPress is set up on our local host. Let's go ahead and log in as And now you can see that we are in the WordPress administrator on our local host and we can do all the great things that WordPress allows us to do. And if we open this up in a new tab, we'll see that our WordPress is ready to go and we can do all the modifications, all the playing around, everything that we need to do on our local box without messing up anything on our production box. So that is just a quick run through of setting up WordPress on a local host instance using XAMPP. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video and explain to you one of the biggest mistakes that WordPress administrators make on a monthly, weekly, even sometimes daily basis when it comes to just updating their WordPress installation from either the WordPress base core install or even from your plugins over here. Um, people just, they'll see an update and they'll just update it. Now, 99% of the time, most of these updates work. However, it's that 1% time that can really take down your site. I've worked on a lot of WordPress sites and I've had people email me and say, Corey, my sidebar is gone. All I did was install a plugin and they'll spend hours, sometimes days trying to fix things. Or they'll say, hey, I did a WordPress upgrade. Everything's gone. Nothing works at all. And even if they did make a backup, sometimes those backups stay a little bit out of sync with what you just did. And so sometimes even though you restore a backup really quickly, you may lose a couple posts. And in some cases, you may be very diligent about always making sure your backups are in sync right after a post. And that's great for you. However, in the real world, that doesn't always happen. So the best technique that I found is to always make sure that you jump out over to your development environment, do all your, all your updates and all your upgrades to your plugins, to your base, your WordPress base installation in here, make sure it works and then do the exact same thing over here in a production instance. And you'll have a lot more stability in your system. Um, for example, a lot of people will click the update now button or link, should I say, and then they'll come over here and just click the update automatically button without reading any of this information. I mean, it says important before updating, please back up your database and files. This is really important. I mean, they're trying to make it a point here. So don't just always do this uh, nonchalantly without thinking about it. If you get in the habit of updating your local host, then you are going to create a much more stable environment and you won't have to run into that 1% chance where you just blow up everything. So I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation on using WordPress on your local computer. If you'd like more videos like this, please engage our community at lifeinthegrid.com and let us know what kind of information you want us to provide to take your business to the next level. Thanks for watching and have a great day.